Cameron Hughes. China has always fascinated us, not only historically, but also technologically. Building is very fast in this country and this also applies to subway systems. And we also had quite a respect from painting a metro in China. The first trip to Beijing was organized by Dano and Lil Vix, today already a member of RCLS. Only four panels. <laughs> China leaves a gigantic impression. Everything is huge and all the places are crowded. Maintaining order in this type of society is only possible through natural respect or even fear. That's why the streets are filled with CCTV cameras as well as a large number of official communist security guards and police officers. We immediately started mapping the situation in the subway. We were interested in the number one line with a beautiful old type of subway train. Every day for a whole week we went to check the spot where the train was sidetracked. A week of paranoia, dodging the CCTV and weaving our way under the cameras on our way to the spot. And then we made it. Later on, Vix left, and Daor and Tibak came. Dano had a hangar checked in advance. Entry to the window and then climbed down along the pipes. Down there, a beautiful subway model was waiting for us. Top level action! We celebrated it big time with Xin Tao beer. We really enjoyed Beijing together. It's a great city, it breeds history, technology and communist ideology at the same time. Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Shanghai. You must go out. It's very useful to do your homework before you depart for any foreign destination. We use Baidu maps quite a lot. It's something like Google Maps, but for China. Before entering the train, the backpack must be cleared of any sprays because all the baggage always passes through an X-ray. Shanghai Railway Station. Next station, Shanghai Railway Station. In Shanghai, we found a beautiful depot where we pulled off a pretty nice action. Let's go 
as a goodbye to the city, guys wanted to hit a seven minute back jump. Unfortunately, with back jumps, your pretty intentions are always changed by the reality of the timetable, so the train left after a few minutes. Metro is painted? I hope so. Show must go on the beach. Eh? Hello, hello. Have you ever heard of Tianjin? Neither have I, but it's a city of almost 15 million people. And there's a subway there. What I remember from this city is the darkness in the fruit orchard, where we spent two nights sitting on a tree branch watching the security rounds at the subway premises. Once we got to understand how the system works, then we hit it. And then off directly to Xi'an with a fast train speeding at 300 light years per minute. Xi'an was great. We saw the terracotta army, beautiful pagodas. Put simply, we visited this city to have a good time. We split our time here 50-50. Three days of chill, and the next three days we were sowing the security fence. And as it sometimes happens in this country, the window was open again. We are in Xi'an. This is the Terracotta Army. The action wasn't particularly pleasant as we were painting above a hole in the ground. A fast crew piece and it was over. Here's the camera and... Send it. Nanjing, very poor air quality. Subway, Yes, they have one and it's paintable. We were done in three days. Hey, hey Metro! Man, go under the train! I'm gonna see stretch background. It's moving. Now we are in Nanjing, in China. We did the metro, which is pretty ugly. Niao! Hello! Hello! No, video, video. Hello! Hello! Uh, Nanjing, Nanjing? Nanjing, China, Nanjing. Show must go on. Okay. Show must go on. Uh, Bruce, Lee? Uh, Bruce Lee? Let's crash the car. Uh, guys, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Wuxi, that sounds like jelly candy or a teenage porn star, but also like a name of a city in China. Urban Rail says the following about the subway in the city. It is clean, modern and efficient compared to many global systems, but is lacking in design flair, buzz and intensity that you get with newer Chinese metros, lines and extensions. I also have to add that it's finally been painted as well. We weaved our way dodging sensors and started to paint. Hey. 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 
go. In China during the night, especially in a city like this, the streets are empty. There are just police cars driving around. We were hiding in the streets for a few hours and then we took a cab and left for the airport. There was the usual stress, cards in our hands, our ass is super tight with fear. We really don't want to have any trouble in this country. Luxi. Posledný meč nám slúžil veľmi dobre. Although Kuala Lumpur doesn't look like that, it's actually quite an old city. It was founded back in 1857 by Chinese miners working in tin mines. Guys took a few sprays with them on the plane because in some Asian cities, cops actually visit graffiti shops to ask if some sprays have been sold to tourists. It's easier for them to investigate when something happens. We checked the layout that looked pretty good, but it was located next to the back wall of the police building. So, right the next night, we went out to the rail track. We hit the sprays that were left after the action in the bushes. We marked the spot and left the city. Two months later, we returned. The bushes had been cut in the meantime, but the sprays were still there, although a bit corroded. We decided for a daytime action in the yard, which we checked already during the previous trip. The yard was surrounded by busy streets and the high-rise residential buildings. But the metro was automatic, that is, without the driver, and we also found an entrance through the drain. So, they put on the vest and did what they are best at. They vandalized. <laughs> Okay. There are over 100 million people living on these islands. Most of them are Muslims, so getting even a few beers can be a problem. This destination is attractive since literally all the operating metro trains are from Japan only. And we have a special relationship to Japan. <laughs> Our friend Roomba, rest in peace bro, gave us a couple of contacts to young local riders. <laughs> we 
we were painting a metro in full operation, filled with people, security included. Security guy jumped out of the train while we were painting, so we had to run. We traveled across Java with train. The first stop was Purwakarta, where immobile Japanese subway cars are stored, peeled up on each other like french fries, a strange image. So they painted on them. The security wasn't too happy about it. In Java, we also painted several other trains. This time, they were arranged normally, one after another. about Manila that it is relatively difficult to paint a subway there. The security guards don't hesitate to shoot when they detect the trespassing of the subway premises. We had a good contact from Ramba to a local boy. With a great deal of pessimism when it comes to a successful action, we went more or less only to check a spot near the airport. But we were lucky. There was some sort of reconstruction going on and instead of a real fence there was only a temporary one. The time of the day was good, it was just getting dark. So we decided to give it a try, then and there. A quick crew piece, because the entry and exit were fully monitored by cameras. Boys first visited Vietnam back in 2015. With me now, it is their third time here. There are several reasons. Fobo, roasted dog meat, and after 2017, also the newly built subway in Hanoi. Until then, we had to be satisfied with trains only. Sprays were a bit of a problem. We found a small shop in a narrow street in the city center and bought spray cans there, which left a lot to be desired in terms of their functioning. But it was enough to paint a graffiti piece on a train. Graffiti seems to be an unknown thing here. While we're painting, the employee rode by on a scooter bike and he only smiled at us as he apparently had no idea what we were doing there. We traveled the whole of Vietnam from north to south and enjoyed it quite intensively. Last stop was Ho Chi Minh City, also known as Saigon. 
extreme heat, a bustling city with millions of scooter bikes, and even a real graffiti show with normal sprays, it was a pleasant daytime action. our second visit to Vietnam, we found out that the subway in Hanoi is almost finished. I came over to look at the construction of the hangar, but there were no trains there so far. Never mind, I can wait. We were collecting information for the whole year regarding the time when the new metro trains were to be transported to Hanoi, until finally they did it and distributed the trains nicely at every station. The year was 2017 and our objective was clear. The action was quite easy. They apparently didn't have any reason to implement proper security measures on the subway. So we gave them one. They didn't like our piece. The next day, the media unleashed hell. Cụ thể tại tầng 3 của 50 mét, đầu của toa tàu, các vết vẽ tràn lên cả phần cửa kính của tàu Việt Nam. Sau nhiều lần trì hoãn, kế hoạch the new subway, it made it to the newspaper headlines as well as TV prime time and online discussions. Thưa quý vị, vào đầu giờ chiều ngày hôm nay, hình ảnh đoàn tàu Cát Linh Hà Đông bị vẽ dày đặc bằng sơn phun đã được cộng đồng mạng chia sẻ kèm theo nhiều bình luận bức xúc vì hành động vui. On the one hand, it was fun and crazy and stuff, but on the other, it is quite scary. We flew away as early as we possibly could, and for us, this means the end of Vietnam for good. like visiting developing Asian countries. Myanmar, formerly known as Burma, has just recently opened for tourism. Very few tourists, really nice locals and a great number of beautiful Buddhist pagodas. Besides the above, the country offers beautiful and immaculately spotless trains, Japanese types that Myanmar received from Japan as a gesture of solidarity. But it was very difficult to get close to them, impossible from neither side. Ultimately, I had to walk into the yard directly through the gate passing the policeman with a smile and a camera in my hand, claiming that I was gonna shoot a documentary. In fact, I didn't even lie. I stopped as far as under the bridge where I painted a stressed out 10 minute piece. The second action was similar.
India is incredible. You will understand it when you get there. I did just few actions, but when you start checking the spots, you fast realize you need three times more time than you expected. Distance between the stations are huge. If first spot doesn't look good, you need like two or three hours to get to another spot. Then walk million kilometers around and anyway you find people fucking everywhere. In the bush, in the train, on the train, under the train. But these more than 90 years old trains are worth it. People usually don't want to go there second time, but I definitely want to. India is a country that you will remember very well. We arrived at Caucasus in the night. Georgia is a small country with a communist past. Among others, it is a birthplace of Joseph Stalin. We had some ideas from our friends where we should go to paint the subway in Tbilisi, the capital. However, these spots didn't work out too well, so we had to find other locations. On one of the spots, there were two subway cars parked outside in front of the hangar, but the security officer kept ceaselessly walking around them, keeping eye on them. We waited for the right moment when he left to take a break. Unfortunately, he only went for a short piss and was back in a minute. Then we tried two other spots, which actually looked promising. One of them literally enchanted us. It wasn't too deep under the ground, a typical communist era ventilation. We had to go inside through a grating which wasn't quite easy as somebody constantly walked on the pavement near the spot. Taking advantage of the cables, we descended down to the underground. Through it, one could squeeze into the tunnel between the station and the layup where the metro was located. A city that never sleeps and at the same time generates millions of snapshots and individual moments every single day. Every night comes with thousands of stories that nobody remembers by the morning. A city where you can feel like a king with some cash in your pocket, although in the fact you are incredibly small and meaningless.
We've been to New York City several times, just like in several other major global cities. But all of these cities have one thing in common, and that is that we know fuck all about them. How's that possible? Because we spend most of the time in the subway. We made several pieces in the city, but one action stood out and was really interesting. I was just out there doing my shopping when I got a phone call from Dar. We finally received some good tip for a good spot, checkers available, but we need to get going immediately. There was no time to return home, so we all met at the very last subway station before the one we were planning to jump down in the yard and run behind the wall where an old station was located. Put on a hoodie, mask and gloves and fully armed we took a train to the spot. Being masked is crucial as long as possible. Cameras are everywhere and NYC cops like to investigate when a new graffiti appears. We jumped onto the rails and run behind the wall and we almost immediately got to the train where we were going to paint. A quick check for undercover cops and here we go sketching. Quick letters, double hand fill-in, and an incredible feeling. In fact, we are in a movie, our movie. Eight minutes and we are done. We were running deeper into the tunnel, took a left turn, 100 meters straight on, and an emergency exit should be there. And it was there, exactly that 100 year old hatch used by the old graffiti legends. moment with a strong vibe. In no time we stopped the cab and got in. I wish you could see the facial expression of the cab driver when he saw three masked men getting into his car.
We arrived to Puerto Rico only two months after the devastating hurricanes which completely destroyed this island. We were lucky the electricity was working already. Despite all the sadness around, our target was clear. Metro San Juan. There was a city fiesta during our stay, which was nice because a lot of rum and beer around. Also a great atmosphere in the air. But also bad because a dozen of cops on every junction. We have chosen an elevated spot which was probably never done before by anybody. It was 10 meter high and the only possible way to get there was climb the ladder. So we had to get one. Took almighty orange vests on and went to the hardware store to, um, let's say rent it. Okay. we forgot to bring the ladder back to the store. Maybe it's still there. Just go and find out. The city built on cocaine smuggling from Colombia. Our minister of cocaine lives there as well. Yes, the next destination was Miami. Silicon people like from a magazine on every corner, million dollar cars on every filling station, and cops in every single yard. Our dream came true after five days of doing nothing else than chasing subway trains. Chupni, chupni. The next day, we were rewarded with a beautiful downtown traffic. This week was certainly worth it. After the hot Miami, we were in for a cold shock in Atlanta. Atlanta, together with Cleveland, belongs to the top 10 most dangerous cities in the U.S. Every year, the city witnesses a large number of firearm attacks, rape cases, and armed robberies. On the other hand, the city is also home of statues of Martin Luther King or Tupac Shakur. In some neighborhoods, we really felt that they were all eyes on us just like the title of Tupac's legendary album from 1996. In one of the black neighborhoods, we heard fireworks not far from where we were just staying. But there was no holiday or anything on that day, so I asked one of the locals what was being celebrated. No celebration, man, that's gunshots. Our local contact from EHC crew picked us up and treated us like kings giving us a rich American-style breakfast. We checked a few spots for painting and we found one train sidetracked on layup. Thank you. 
The freight train workers see us. I guess they saw us. By the time the police arrived at the spot, we were already chasing the train in traffic. Los Angeles is a city that everybody knows well from the movies and TV series. And a gang capital of America. It is a home to a number of well-known porn stars, actors and actresses, rappers, but also the Cribs and Bloods. Hello. Hi. Are you Pocahontas? I am a Carmen Electra, Hollywood. Carmen Electra. Beautiful queen, please check the picture. Carmen Electra. We visited Compton, Hollywood, Venice Beach, as well as Beverly Hills. We are from LA, Compton, and the show must go on. Our local contact from Emuel gave us two useful pieces of advice. First, take the jack screw from the car with you. Second, if a helicopter is chasing you, split. One helicopter cannot follow all of you at once. The jack screw served us really well to get through two fences. We dodged the cameras and pulled off a really cool action. LA has a strong vibe and atmosphere. During our painting, two movies were being shot at the location. A new episode of Avengers on the bridge above the yard, and the show must go on directly inside the yard. Ooh, there is a workout. Ooh, the guy is coming. Uh -huh. Kidding, kidding. One photo. Later, Thank in you. the car, we found out that we had forgotten the jack screw near the fence in the yard. Fuck. San Francisco is the most liberal city in the United States. Also, it was recently labeled as the most fun city of America. Perhaps it's because people here don't eat so much fast food, they ride their bikes a lot, or maybe it's because more than 15% of the population are members of gay, lesbian community. Such a nice waterfall. <laughs> Respect, girl. But it all has its downside, and more than 7,000 people living in San Francisco are homeless. Local residents are foodies and snobs. They love iPhones, Fernet, craft beer bars, and are into zero waste policy, which is cool. Later on, we also emptied all our sprays in the yard with zero leftovers. We pulled off two actions. The first one with the guys from MUL crew and the second one in a black ghetto. The yard was peaceful but surrounded by crackheads and at the end we had to run. We were quite certainly the only whites in the neighborhood. At the gas station we got out from the car and a five-piece group of black boys were asking, what's this white squad? We weren't really sure what to say, so we rather hurried into the yard. Uh, 
a good one now. Y'all be smooth. All right. All right. winter, the city was snowed in a calamity. Private owners of snowplows must have made pretty money that winter. Painting graffiti is not such a problem, there are quite a few possibilities. We hooked up with people from Amula Crew to get a few good ideas for spots. This is a well-organized crew, it has its structure and hierarchy. Overall, the career of a young writer in Chicago has its set path. He or she goes from one crew to another and only then they can reach the highest level and become a member of a crew such as MUL. Movement in any kind of snow is just exhausting. Everything takes longer, you can wear any kind of boots, but sooner or later they are full of snow. Can I put the camera here? Bro, it could be automatic or no? Hot, hot, hot. A 15 minute action near the motorway bypass was interrupted by the arrival of the workers. So we took a break in the proper American style and returned later to finish the job. All cool, all done. Thursday morning, first snow, an ideal time to try out the f***ing yard. We pulled off an action in that yard two times in a row. Three rounds of rebirth in 15 minutes. Checking around. Okay. okay. I look good so far. Right, cool. Hey, it's raining. It's raining. Where is it coming from? From that side. From over here. Okay, hold on. Hold this. Oh yeah, I see the trans, but it's blocking our exit. Oh, fuck! He see you? Tell him he see him. Ready? Yes. Go. Do you know what's rebirth? When your fingers get so cold that they gradually become completely numb, you actually need to stop painting and need to start moving them to circulate blood, put them under your armpit, into your trousers, basically anywhere warmer to ensure they start working again. As your fingers are gradually waking up, undergoing the process of rebirth, 
it is a very unpleasant and painful sensation. Well, and this is called a rebirth. The first spot where we put a pin in Canada's map was Toronto. It's Canada's largest city and it welcomed us with a quite chilly weather. But we had a rather warm contact there. A civilian guy, that is somebody who wasn't a graffiti beast, but he loved graffiti and all the things related. He gave us accommodation and even checked for us during a night action at Kipling. A new day and a new spot for painting. However, it wasn't a success as we didn't have the right tools to get in. Yet another spot. Jump down from the station into the tunnel, run to the layup, but there was nothing there. What a disappointment. We waited the whole fucking night while sitting on the steps of the emergency exit, but no metro was pulled in. Well, 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 another super cool night during our holidays in Canada. But we certainly wanted to pull off at least one more action, so we went to a spot which is never empty, the green with the yard. Next up, Montreal. They have a pretty French looking subway. So we immediately went to action. It was a Slovak, Hungarian, French, Australian cooperation. And as a result, eight masked individuals with an immense desire to paint were bustling about next to the window to the Metro Hall. Vancouver was our last stop in Canada. April, our contact, gave us a phone number of a local guy who didn't paint subway trains, but he helped us immensely. Thanks, Ekno. Show me, 
Right on the first night, we went to check the yard. It was dark already, but there were numerous lights making the spot look like it was a bright day. Nevertheless, we returned later in the night and cut through the fence. The metro was automatic. No drivers, so we got rid of the problem that somebody will see us from the train car. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Uh, what are you doing here? Uh, painting. And why are you doing? Uh, are you allowed? Not legal, huh? uh, I don't know. This is North Korea. I don't know. I think. Uh, ah, okay. Also okay, it's called Coca-Cola Company. Okay. Yes, Have a nice day or night or something. Moreover, the Rijan Ikno checked for us. We made a 25-minute piece followed by a two-minute of destruction of our own panels. In Canada, they take graffiti seriously, and they are fully committed to investigation. So we made some more panels on the next metro car. We emptied almost all our sprays into the yard. It took us 21 hours to get from Buenos Aires to Santiago, but the route took us over the mighty Andes and the border crossing was at the altitude of 3000 meters. When it comes to the possibilities for painting, we never heard anything encouraging about Santiago. We met with Tibak and went to try our luck. Just getting to the yard was a problem because every property in Santiago is protected by a tall electrical fence with security guard at every corner. It was a very busy yard and we couldn't even get a single minute of a relative inaction to get in. This wasn't really the right way to succeed. Subsequently, we contacted the Afula's crew and they took us to an underground spot where it all seemed better. We needed to break in through the emergency exit. Then we went to check the spot. Local guys checked for us in the tunnel as well as out on the street. Big up, system done. The next day, a friend from KGM crew flew in and we went to another spot together. It was an outside yard and we managed to get through an electrical fence as far as to the hangar. But it was full of workers, so we walked out and suddenly, right at the very moment, a metro train was pulled next to the fence. So, we applied a few quick pieces on it and fucked right off. Next stop Valparaiso, a city by the ocean. The city was ugly and the metro was quite difficult to paint. Stories go that in the past writers were often shot at. Another ideal destination for our holidays. Take this shit, man, easy, easy. Which camera? Fuck it, paint here. No, cannot see us. Let's do it. Okay, they saw us already, somebody from the street, but it's okay. Ninch, don't you ask us too much, ask us. That's it, I'm asking. And put it the picture. The guy is coming. Paint, 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 paint. paint. Yeah. Hola, don't come to 
We quite boldly entered the yard with Tibek, but two minutes later somebody spotted us and interrupted us. We weren't quite finished, so we waited for the train in traffic, we used the handbrake method and completed what was begun. Then we negotiated with UNESCO if it's okay to paint the funicular in Valparaiso, as it is a UNESCO-listed site. They said, um, um uh, no. Finally arrived on the other side of the world. This continent was harder to succeed than I expect. I came on school holidays time in Australian summer with daylight almost all day long. This makes all actions way harder than usual. Train didn't stop, drivers check. Nice action in the station, everything smooth with traffic after. Next action, I didn't even put camera on the ground and the driver already screamed at us. Next three minutes, back jump with opening doors all the time. And you can try to eat slow But you can mess it up So get right in Does that it work out though? Come on, let me see you go Sydney's day was also one chasing by Wandal Squad included hey! Checked out Do better for yourself Melbourne with night blue metro trains. action in the yard. V-Line was perfect daytime action in crazy 42 degrees. Long jeans, all black, plus almighty west on. Oof, very bad. Our African road trip started in Cape Town. We wanted to see as many natural landmarks as we possibly could, so we visited Cape Good Hope and beautiful empty beaches with sand dunes. We painted on the streets in remote areas where the local Zulus were watching us with keen interest. At the same time, we heard a lot of unpleasant stories about the country. 
after the demise of the apartheid, the original black population quite obviously dislikes the whites. After all, it's been just a few decades since the things started to get better. We heard many disturbing stories, like one about European writer fucked in the ass in the African prison with the resulting AIDS infection. We had a great local contact, Toe, the king of Cape Town. He prepared an action, told us to take 200 rands each as an entry fee for the local ghetto boys, and it all will be smooth and sound. We pulled off a 20-minute action. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands. Try to catch me howling at the moon. We gave enough time to the boys from the ghetto to get ready for us. Upon our departure, two youngsters crossed our path. They weren't older than 12, but one of them pulled out a gun and aimed at us. The second just said plainly, Give me everything! They left with the equivalent of roughly 20 euro. They didn't care at all about the pretty expensive cameras hanging around our necks. Well, money talks. Our path took us to the next city, whose name is not important, because we only went there because of the metro line called East London. And this line ends at a terminal stop named Berlin. Don't ask me why. Then the endless 1200 kilometer route to Johannesburg. Naturally, we were scared of the city because of all the stories and advice you get before visiting. Don't stop at red lights after dark because your car will be stolen. Don't get busted because in the detention cell you'll be fucked in the ass before you say you're wrong. Security officers there are super violent and don't hesitate to shoot when a suitable target appears. And finally, they got heel bro there, right? The local fella whose contact we received from Toe prepared a pretty action. From South Africa, we went to Botswana. People there are warmer, there's less crime, and they have a nice train model. Hello. Hello. 
Africa, check. The difference is huge between travel and home. When you're traveling, you get a chance to break your everyday pattern and routines. You get to see new places and new faces. It's a bit like doing your new days over again when everything feels new and fresh. Being at home is more of a safe zone. You know how and where to get around and most things are not out of your comfort zone. Traveling means that you're more free to take risks since you do not know much about the spots or the politics in the country. You usually see more possibilities and opportunities than the locals do. Because as a local you know, there is a risk with legal consequences as being locked up or probation fines, which can affect your job, family, lifestyle, etc. I have at my best maybe 20 more good years in graph, so it's not a matter of choosing. The day will come when you don't have the energy to do it. I'm just trying to enjoy the life in the best way I can until the day comes. But I never had a week so far since I started with graph without painting, so I'm pretty sure it will continue in that way for some more years. constantly on top of it. As soon as you get lazy, things change. It's almost like a full-time job. It has taken me many years to learn what I know about my system and even to this day I'm discovering new things. That's what I love about it. It's an old system, the first system, so they've had a long time to secure it all. We do things professionally and do it to avoid going to prison. It's not something that you could just turn up and do. London is definitely up there with the hardest big systems in the world. I like it when writers do things professionally, putting the work together in planning and preparation, be there from the start to finish, like a real team player. Many writers in London tend to be lazy, don't want to put in any real work, they just want the red carpet treatment. Most will hear about a way of doing something, or get taken to something with no real knowledge of the spot, and these tend to be the ones who try to take the limelight for it. Another thing I don't like is the lack of respect for certain yards. They'll find a way of doing something and do it over and over. 
without giving it a good gap. They will do it until the waves burn. I think painting a board is the best way to experience a country for what it has to offer. It's differences. You can see things a usual tourist would never dream of seeing. But you almost feel like a toy seeing a new system with its different rules, layouts, maps, tactics they use to catch you. It's like starting from the beginning almost. Unless you have good contacts. Prison, family, friends, whatever and whoever can stop me. It's an addiction I love, my passion and life. A lifestyle I've been a part of for over 10 years. I've seen a lot on this trip, even sometimes more than I wanted to. Not speaking about graffiti, but the world around. I perceived the enormous disparity in the energy span, the dangers and the risks that had to be taken compared to what it brought to guys, to the society, to the world. It is fine to disrupt a person's everyday stereotype through graffiti, but what feeling and message will it leave behind? Will it really help someone? Using graffiti as a mass communication medium could be a good way to balance it. It is about leaving footprints, marks. Let's get into people's heads. But let's try to leave important information behind and encourage the changes. Let's devote to what matters. Let's paint. Let's give. Drink, 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 and drive. No, oh man, what is this? Drink more. Drink. Drink, really more. Drink, drink, drink. This guy's not even drinking. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, thank you. Bing, cool, bing, cool. Song hard, song Bing, cool, bing, cool. I'm afraid bing, to eat food. Cool. Ping cool, Ping cool, Ping cool, Ping cool, Ping cool, Ping cool, cool, Ping 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 c